And if we're not careful, we will spend our entire lives trying to balance an equation that cannot be balanced in this life. Listen, we want life to be fair, but life is not fair. It's not fair. You're, we're going to get into the book of Esther next week. You're going to see there's Esther. All these Jews are suffering. It's 100 years after the first deportation to Babylon. They didn't have anything to do with all the sin and all the stupid stuff. Yet they're suffering because of it. You can look in your own lives. There's so many things right now that you might be suffering from, and you really had nothing to do with it. It was someone else's mistake. It was someone else's bad decision. It was someone else's unfairness. And so what happens is, if we're not careful, we'll begin to live life in this, with this filter. I call it a filter of fairness. That my life is about things being balanced, things being fair for me, you hurt me, I want you to pay for that hurt, you did me wrong in the past, I want, you know, I want an apology, I want, I, I, you know, some of you right now, you're hoping that you show up at Thanksgiving dinner this Thursday and someone comes and says, you know I was so wrong. I'm so sorry for hurting you. I'm so sorry that last Thanksgiving I told you that you ruined Thanksgiving dinner. So what's the solution? What's the solution in this life? And we, if we know that life's not fair, we all agree with that, well then what is the only way that we can live free and not frustrated? Well, the only way, the only way out, the only way to live free in a world that is not fair is to get rid of your filter of fairness and take up God's filter of forgiveness. But here's, listen, listen to this statement right here. I want this to sink in, sink in deep. Listen. The act of forgiveness is the acknowledgement that life is not fair. And this is where Christians miss it. We think that we forgive. However, secretly in our hearts, we still want to see that person pay for their mistake. We still want to see them how they wronged us, so we want to see them fail and learn their lesson. She walked in with those expensive shoes, and I just can't wait to see her trip on those high heels. <laughs> Holla, ladies. It's a component of forgiveness that we don't understand. The act of forgiveness is the acknowledgement that life is not fair. You don't forgive someone because they deserve it. You don't forgive someone because you think eventually you're going to get an apology. You don't forgive someone just because it's like, here's what Christians do. We forgive, but we want fairness. And so what do we do? We're waiting on an apology. Some of you have been in prison for years waiting on an apology from someone else and that apology is not coming. Some of you have been in a prison for years because you're waiting on someone to finally realize the evil of their ways, right? And finally realize how much they've hurt you. And finally realize how, how wrong they've been. And, and, and you know what I'm saying? And, and, and if we're not careful, our waiting on an apology, all of a sudden it turns to resentment. We find ourselves writing emails. And then you write it all up. How many of you ever written a vicious email and you write it all up and then you realize this is so vicious I can't even send it. I just needed to get it out of my system. Come on. Be, be. <laughs> 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 
And we think about things, man, I'm going to send them this blistering email. I'm going to tell all my friends what that person did. And it's not slander, right? You're just telling the truth, right? You just want justice, right? You just want to protect people from them, right? So I need to go, I need to make sure all the people know about this. I need to make sure that all this circle knows about this person so they'll cut them out of the loop. And we begin to contemplate and fantasize the revenge. How they're going to feel bad and what they're going to do. And all of a sudden, we go from, it was a good energy that wants justice. But once that can't be filtered in a Christ-like way, if we're not careful, it goes to resentment and then bitterness. And now you're in that position where the Bible says, watch out for lest a root of bitterness spring up and defile many. Listen, you cannot be thankful if you can't forgive. You cannot move forward if you cannot forgive. Forgiveness is the acknowledgement. Here's the first thing. Forgiveness is the acknowledgement. If I truly forgive someone, then I'm acknowledging life is not fair. This didn't happen the way I wanted it. I might not ever get an apology. I might not ever get a thank you. I might not, I might, I might not ever, you know, it's, 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 and what happens to us is we don't realize what unforgiveness is doing to us. Because we think we're fighting for fairness. But instead of fighting for fairness, it's eventually going to lead to allowing frustration. And you give place to the devil. That's why, did you notice when Jesus told us to pray, what did he say? He said, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. We have to acknowledge, church, listen, that life is not fair. Now, let me give you some good news. It'll be fair one day, guess, guess when? When Jesus comes back. Isaiah 9, it'll be the first time, it'll be the first time in the world in this dispensation that someone, he will rule from Jerusalem, the Bible says, with righteousness and fairness. He will rule. Life will be totally fair. It will be totally just. But until that day, life is not fair. You will be done wrong. People are going to hurt you. You're going to deserve the promotion. Somebody else is going to get the promotion. You are totally committed to the marriage. The other person is going to sin and bail out on the marriage. You're going to be totally committed to this thing, and all of a sudden someone else's mistake is going to forfeit that opportunity to you. People are going to lie about you. People are going to treat you bad. People are going to say things about you. That's why you have to have the attitude as Jesus had. I have not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. I'm a servant. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ through me. Look, I'm a dead man. You can't hurt a dead man. The act of forgiveness is the acknowledgement that life is not fair. And here's how you can know. If you're really on the pathway of forgiveness, are you still expecting something back? Are you still trying to balance the equation? Are you still waiting on the apology? Are you still waiting on the the email? And our greatest example is Jesus himself. How many of you know life didn't treat Jesus fairly? The crucifixion wasn't fair from a human point of view. Jesus lived a perfect life. Life didn't treat Jesus fair, but Jesus understood the power of forgiveness. That's why he said, Father, forgive them, for they do know not what they do. That's why when we come to Christ, we understand that Jesus forgave us before he ever knew that we would believe. The forgiveness of God is so rich and so vast and so deep. And as believers, we have to accept this as the foundational component of our walk with God and our walk with one another. You cannot be a disciple of Christ and walk through life not forgiving other people. 